More and more banks are charging negative interest rates for customers' cash that's kept in accounts. That means that they're just charging you fees for the money that is deposited in their bank. HSBC Bank, Europe's biggest bank, now is charging uh, fees and implementing negative interest rates for people who deposit euros and Swiss francs into their accounts. And here's an article from Yahoo Finance that asks, are negative interest rates coming to America? Yes, the banking industry now charging people money uh, to deposit their money. <laughs> when I was a kid back in the 1990s, I remember getting 5% interest on my savings account when I was saving up for that mountain bike I was trying to buy. My, how times have changed. In fact, there is such a war on cash by the big banks and the Illuminati mafia-controlled government that more and more big banksters and economists are proposing that cash should be made illegal. Yes, that's right. This scumbag, Jim Levis, financial advisor, actually proposes uh, that the government fluctuate fees uh, in order to force people to spend money that they store in their savings or checking accounts. What he basically wants the government to do is if people are just keeping money in their account in a safe place and he wants the, he thinks the government needs to you know jumpstart the economy that he wants the government to propose massive fines on anybody who has savings in order to coerce them into spending it so that they don't lose it on fines yes a Citibank economist Citigroup one of the other big Illuminati banks says also this is just from a few weeks ago it's time to abolish cash. Oh, just make it illegal. For many years now, if you fly on airlines, you may have noticed that many of them do not accept cash uh, for the uh, services provided at the snack cart. Only credit or debit cards. Despite cash saying that it's supposed to be legal tender for any and all transactions, the airlines coerce people into signing away that right in the terms of service when they buy a ticket. Are you aware of civil asset forfeiture? Yes, police actually seize cash if they pull you over in a routine traffic stop. If you have an envelope of cash or if you just have what they believe to be too much, let's say you just you know sold an old car or a motorcycle or... If you're on the way to poker night with the guys, you have a little bit too much cash on you, and they discover it, they can and do frequently confiscate it without charging you with a crime, even though there's no evidence of a crime. Civil asset forfeiture says that the cash itself is actually evidence of a crime, even though they can't detail any specifics about where, what crime or how the money was supposedly obtained illegally. So they just take it. Highway seizure in Iowa fuels, fuels debate, and this happens all over the place. Uh, you got a couple thousand bucks, two thousand oh, dollars? That's probably just drug money. We're going to just have to confiscate that from you. As the war on cash continues, I mean, we're virtually in a cashless society at this point, which is interesting because, you know, back in the 1990s and early 2000s, when, quote, conspiracy theorists were warning about the coming cashless society, the mark of the beast, they were called crazy, paranoid conspiracy kooks. But now it's here, and everyone is, most people, are welcoming it with open arms. And a study just uh, la conducted last year shows that 50% of Americans carry less than $20 cash on them at any given time when they step out of the house. And many people carry nothing, no cash. But that's mainly the millennials and those in Generation Z, Generation Zombie. People say, oh, what's wrong with a cashless society? I think it's so convenient. I think that it's just fantastic. Uh, well, did you just... Uh, Buy a pregnancy test, some medication to treat an embarrassing medical condition. Are you seeing a therapist for some mental health issues or maybe some marital problems? 
Did you just purchase some personal items for you and your girlfriend or your wife to use in the bedroom? Are you buying certain books that the government may misinterpret as suspicious? In a cashless society, all of these transactions and more are made available to not only the government, but countless third parties such as advertisers and international corporations who have access to your entire purchasing history due to the terms of service you implicitly agree to with the use of your debit or credit card. Not to mention the centralization of all points of purchase and relying on a single digital network to facilitate them all is just begging for trouble in the event that there is a system-wide failure. A power outage, computer glitch, or a cyber attack would be absolutely devastating to tens or perhaps hundreds of millions of people, completely crippling their ability to purchase gas or food or even buy a bus ticket or a subway pass to get home from school or work. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're new. Check out some of the previous videos and the playlists. Stay tuned. There's more videos coming soon.